the enrichment of Europe during the slave trade in this article, we will tell you how Europe went from the status of probably the poorest continent to that of the richest continent in the world, by decimating the black continent. The world before the European slave trade. In the 14th century, Arabs politically ran the world. Begun in the 7th century, the domination of Arabs was based on their cultural, political and religious prominence. Their influence stretched from East Asia to Western Europe, passing by the Middle East and North Africa. If the Arabs were the most powerful people in the world, the Africans were seemingly the richest people in the world. The stories on the mind-blowing state of the material opulence of Africa before the European slave trade abound. Kanku Musa, Emperor of Mali in the 14th century, is, with a fortune invaluable according to Time magazine, the richest man in the history of humanity. Even the Arabs who had been everywhere, made Africa the reference in terms of wealth, and this through this saying, against the gale of the camel, use tar, and against poverty, make a trip to Sudan. The Sudan here meant Africa. At the same time, China was living the splendor of its imperial era and America that of the Aztec civilization. The Indian Ocean was the trade route between Africa, the Middle East and East Asia. The Africans were certainly making trade with the Native Americans and with the blacks of Australia. What was the place of Europe before the enslavement of Africans? Europe was probably the poorest continent in the world. After the fall of the powerful Roman Empire, Europe fell in a semi-state of barbarism. Famine, disease, tribal and religious wars, slavery, dirt, mass illiteracy were evils commonly shared. In Paris the people lived among pigs and were literally defecating in the streets. The stench was untenable. The most important civilization in Europe at that time was the Moorish civilization in Spain and Portugal. This was the fact of black Berbers from the Maghreb called Moors or Saracens, and Arabs. It is this civilization that has enabled Europe to get out of its disastrous state by reintroducing the sciences and the arts. The Africans have particularly reintroduced hygiene in Europe. In a macabre game of musical chairs therefore, Africa took Europe's place, Europe, West, took Arabs' place. And China, a country as big as a continent, soon first world power, would take the place of Africa of then. The Enrichment of Europe The African-Caribbean historian Jean-Philippe Omotunde in his book La Traite Negriere Européenne, Verité et Mensongs, The European Slave Trade, Truth and Lies, pages 64 and 65, takes the particular case of France and England, which entered though secondarily in a traffic granted by the Vatican to only Portugal and Spain, to show how Europe experienced a spectacular economic boom in putting Africans in slavery, and this through different levels. Given the military aspect of the slave trade, terrorist actions on African soil and systematic destruction of African civilizations, war against the African resistance, gifts of weapons to Africans who collaborated, maintenance of the order on the boats, the armaments industry in Europe knew a tremendous growth with the manufacture of rifles, guns, swords, powder. With the raids that required to fund investors, ship owners, slave traders, soldiers and the intermediaries, the banking sector would know an unprecedented boom, Lloyd's, Barclays Bank, Bering etc. The damage caused by the revolts in the sea, the attacks of the African resistance and enslaved Africans on the plantations, there was a need to insure against the hazards of the traffic, whence the expansion of insurance companies. The increase in orders of slave boats created the economic development of ports without forgetting the lever effects on the economic activity of the port cities St. Malo, Nantes, La Rochelle, Seville, St. Nazaire, Liverpool, Bordeaux. For La Rochelle between 1739 and 1793, 349 galley ships journey, distributed between 56 ship owners. The activity begot huge fortunes. The French lawyer Hilliard of Obertoy (1751–1789) declares that enslaved Africans are the source of the prosperity of Europe, and Voltaire said that the Caribbean are points on the map. But finally, these countries that can barely glimpse on a world map have produced for France an annual circulation of 60 million merchandise. 60 million of goods is equivalent today to billions of euros, and this for a single year. One even went to assert that the cessation of the slave trade would result in the unemployment of half of the French workers. The Bank of France is, in its origins, intimately associated to the slave trade. 
we have the figures of a slave trader who for $39,980 investment has made $41,438 of net profits or more than 100% for a single shipment. According to the BBC, the money derived from the activity of the slave trade is at the origin of modern capitalism. We know today that it is the money of this criminal trafficking which funded the famous Industrial Revolution in the West. According to the National Legal Policy Center in the USA, the number of hours of forced labor of enslaved Africans in the United States is equivalent to 97,000 billion US dollars. Wall Street developed because of the traffic of Africans. Famous banks like Lehman Brothers, J.P. Morgan, Rothschild experienced their booming thanks to the destruction of the lives of Africans. The famous European Renaissance is therefore based on two pillars. First, the reintroduction of sciences and arts by Africans and Arabs of the Moorish civilization. It is the intellectual pillar. Secondly, the annihilation of the Americas with the extermination of millions of natives, as well as the 400 to 600 million African lives lost, with 12 to 30 million of deportees put to forced labor. It is the economic pillar.